wanted to respond to Pea Party's video, Death Penalty for Everyone, and I wanted to start off by apologizing for my so-called generalization, which was not directed at Americans in general, um, but directed at the few dozen uh, American YouTubers who, in my opinion, um, posted some very ignorant video responses to the Philip DeFranco video. Um, these people didn't do their research, and I didn't make my point very clear, so I apologize to anyone I might have offended. Pea Party was right in pointing out that the decline of homicide rates in Canada is not necessarily the direct result of the fact that the death penalty has been abolished. At the same time, um, I don't think that keeping the death penalty instated would be any more effective than having it removed. Um, U.S. crime rates are still four times higher than Canadian crime rates and five times higher than European crime rates. So it's probably more an issue of some much-needed social changes than a question of whether the death penalty should be kept instated or removed. Whether you look at the costs of capital punishment as being a problem with capital punishment in general or simply being a problem with the administration of capital punishment, it's still a problem. It would obviously be faster and uh, cheaper to just buy a bullet and shoot the guy in the head, but in a 21st century Western society, uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Everyone gets a fair trial, and like Pea Party said, if you're sitting on death row for 20 years, 8 years, even 10 years, whatever, taxpayers' money is not only going towards um, housing and uh, feeding expenses, it's also going towards all the legal fees that need to be paid to get this guy to court, defend his case, and so on. That can cost tens of millions of dollars, and I think that the cost of keeping a person in jail for a 25 to life sentence in Canada is somewhere between four hundred and six hundred thousand dollars per case, not per year. I don't agree with what P Party said about capital punishment not being a deterrent. I think it's very much a deterrent um, because, for one, it uh, demonstrates to the criminal that crime doesn't pay, and two, it serves as an example for the rest of society because it shows people this is what will happen to you if you do what that guy did. P Party said that the purpose of capital punishment is to cleanse society. Canada's life sentence serves exactly the same purpose. If a guy like Vince Lee were put in jail, he'd be spending 23 hours out of every day sitting in a maximum security prison cell, um, not only for the safety of the rest of society, but for his own safety. I mean, what do you think would happen if the other inmates got a hold of this guy, or he was released back into society? You remember what happened to Jeff Dahmer? In Canada, anybody serving a life sentence who would be deemed too dangerous to be uh, released back into society would not be granted parole. And if they were granted parole, um, they'd have to go through an intensive rehabilitation program first, and then they'd be monitored like crazy to make sure that they didn't reoffend. Um, and if Finsley ends up pulling the insanity card, then he'll probably spend the rest of his life in some kind of a psychiatric facility. I personally don't agree with um, this sort of an eye for an eye uh, retributive justice principle. Uh, two wrongs don't make a right, and what happened to Tim McLean was absolutely horrific. Uh, but executing a murderer won't bring back the victim. Would executing a killer uh, make the victim's loved ones feel any better? I don't know, but. I don't assume that it would, because it still wouldn't bring them back. A dangerous criminal is still faced with the unpleasant consequences of prison life. Um, they might be attacked or even killed by another inmate, um, or they could be faced with a lifetime of solitary confinement, um, which is enough to make anybody lose their mind. Oftentimes, inmates just end up committing suicide. Another reason I disagree with the death penalty is because a wrongful conviction could lead to the execution of an innocent person, um, and this is obviously not something that happens all the time, but it has happened. If a person is um, living in a state or country where the death penalty isn't practiced and they are wrongfully convicted, at least they can be um, 
released back into society and uh, compensated for legal fees, psychological damage, um, damaged reputation, so on. If you're wrongfully convicted for a crime and executed, well, you know, neither case is very much fun, but I think I'd prefer the former. Uh, lastly, I'm not going to address Pea Party's comments about the afterlife and going to hell because for one, this isn't a religious topic, uh, it's a legal topic, and two, hell is only for people who believe in it.